Welcome to the second half of a Legendarium series about the French Peasants' Rebellion of 1358. In episode 2, we will talk about the climax of the Peasants' Rebellion in which they nearly took the royal family prisoner. However, these successes would be followed by swift and brutal revenge. Throughout the summer of 1358, peasant rebels freely roamed the countryside of northern France. Peasants directed their anger against the nobles' property and did so with vigor. They snatched chickens from the yards, took fish from the ponds, wine from the cellars, and threw feasts in dining halls abandoned by fearful aristocrats. In districts where the church was unpopular, Rebels put monasteries to the torch. But it wasn't just fire and looting. Guillaume Kale, the leader of the peasant rebels, reached out to impoverished townspeople, hoping to form an alliance. This is one example of how some of the peasant leaders could use truly sophisticated tactics. And while the rebels did not win over all the burghers, some of them wore red hoods with miniature plows attached to show their support for the rebellion. They agitated on street corners and held mock trials in which they condemned unpopular nobles to death. As the rebellion progressed, some peasant radicals called for the extermination of the aristocracy. Terrified French nobles sought help in Flanders, Hainault, and Brabant to rally support from their fellow aristocrats. The French nobles spread sensational and completely false stories about peasant atrocities to frighten their counterparts into action. They accused the peasants of roasting knights on spits before cutting up their flesh and forcing highborn ladies and their children to eat the meat of their husbands and fathers. Other horrible and utterly false tales told of knights being burned at the stake and pregnant ladies being murdered. In June 1358, some of the merchants of Paris invited peasant rebels in the nearby countryside to sack the properties of the king's most despised advisers, Pierre de Orgmont and Simon de Bucci. When the peasants seized de Bucci, they forced him to swear an oath to support the rebellion. However, the peasants went further than the Paris merchants wanted them to. On June 9th, a party of 9,000 bellowing rebels attacked the castle of Mew, which sheltered the royal family. The mayor and castle magistrates allowed the rebels inside, either out of fear or welcome. The merchants set out tables laden with bread, meat, and wine so that the hard-working rebels could eat. Unfortunately, the seizure of Mew gave the aristocracy a perfect excuse to crush the rebellion. Hundreds of knights, marching under blue pennants displaying stars and lilies, rode into the bridge of Mew. They charged the peasants, easily trampling them under their horses' hooves. At least a thousand poorly disciplined and armed peasants died in Mew, and the rest fled into the countryside. For two weeks, the knights tracked down anyone thought to have supported the rebellion in Mew. They locked them in their houses and set them ablaze. They also hung the mayor, ransacked the churches, and imprisoned many more. King Charles the Bad of Navarre entered northern France at the behest of the nobles to help crush the peasants. King Charles the Bad would more than live up to his name. Late in June, Charles' feudal army confronted the thousand-strong peasant army of Guillaume Kale, who deployed his men in three battalions behind wagon lockers with archers to provide covering fire. Yet another example of how sophisticated these supposed rustics could be. Surprised by the organized resistance, King Charles invited Guillaume to talks of truce. And with typical chivalric honor, Charles seized Guillaume and executed him by placing a red-hot iron ring upon his head, in mockery of his supposed ambition to be king. Without their chief, the peasant army collapsed. 
For the rest of June and July, King Charles' men fanned out into the countryside, burning and hanging 20,000 real and imagined rebels. However, it would be France that suffered because of this slaughter. With so many peasants dead, France would be helpless to resist English aggression for almost a generation during the Hundred Years' War. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.